Julian Binford is an important artist to Virginia and to the museum. It was a circuitous um, happening how we ended up getting such a rich archive. Our archivist was doing research on another collection, the Lillian Thomas Pratt collection, and there are not very many images of her available, but we did have this painted portrait by Julian Binford in the VMFA collection. Binford's niece ended up having the exact photograph from which the portrait was made, and then she said, and I have all this other material, are you interested in it? And we were like, yes, of course we're interested in it. And it turned out to be a treasure trove of sketchbooks, correspondence, photographs. I mean, it really documented this artist's whole working process. It's incredible, rich resource. And, you know, he was born in Virginia. He studied at the Art Institute of Chicago. He went to France, but then he came back in the 1930s and he worked on WPA projects. He also did a lot of documentation of African American rural life because he restored a foundry in Powhatan County and it was an African American community at that time. And it ended up that he received one of the first fellowships that VMFA ever awarded. The painter may be interested in light and dark, and he may be interested only in the line. He may be interested only in the subject matter, but that's not his primary province. His primary province is in the realm of color. If he's trying to tell a story, he should be doing some form of literature. She's so pretty. <laughs> he was unlike any teacher I'd had because he would actually let you watch him paint. It, everything came together watching him paint. I could watch him for an hour and everything I thought I knew went out the window and I was like, oh, that's how you do it. I think Julian was pretty much forgotten in a way. I think he was much better known in Europe. He had sort of been taking care of his wife for a while and taking care of his house. He said the house was a beautiful thing, but it was probably the worst idea he ever had because it took him away from painting. It took so much to build it and to maintain it. He could fix anything. He could try anything. He tried all sorts of mediums in art. His sculptures, his printer's ink smudges, his murals and his great love of nature. And I remember one year he said, it was spring, and he said, Connie, look, and, and, and out the back of this home, we look across toward the James River. And he said, Connie, look at all those colors. And he was trying to tell me all the colors he saw, and I saw green and pink and lavender. And he saw many, many more colors than I saw. Um, and we were in awe oh, yeah. of him. We were in awe of this man, and he was so unassuming. When I was a little girl, my mother used to work there, and my aunt did too. So I would go there and play around in it. The city was huge. <laughs> and um, it was a lot of paintings, a lot of, it was just wonderful to be there, really. And the place itself was just beautiful, just the grounds. He painted this picture of my mom, Glenna Cox. And he painted this of her. And he painted one of my um, aunt Ophelia, her sister, too. And she has that hanging at her house. Back in the 40s, my uncle, my great uncle, Uncle Archie Fleming, my mother's brother, was asked on a committee to get a mural painting or something done in, in the back of the um, pulpit where we have our baptizing pool and asked Mr. Benford would he do a mural painting and he wanted the, the painting to be Christ coming down through the River Jordan. And they paid for it with, just by produce, they gave him a lot of stuff because they didn't have any way of paying him for that. And I don't even think he would have charged, I actually just took that as payment, which we appreciate that so much. And so in 1942, November the 16th, 1942, they actually had the unveiling in Life Magazine, 1942. And I think it just fits the church perfectly. I really do. And we're proud, proud to have, and proud to have known Mr. Benford, because I think he was a good man in this community. Julian's memorial service was held in that church. The important thing is to preserve his life as much as we can to know about how an artist in that period living in Paris right at the beginning of World War II right before 
Paris was occupied and then trying to survive here when only people were interested in bullets and bombs and the art world, I think, probably suffered a great deal at the time, but I thought that was an important thing to preserve. We've got the best facilities, we've got conservation and collection, state-of-the-art facilities. We're well prepared to make these papers available for years to come.